the Dell G7 gaming laptop has been refreshed into a thinner and more modern looking machine. But just how well does it perform in games with Nvidia's latest RTX graphics? In this video, I've benchmarked 20 different games at all setting levels to show you how well it runs and compared it against some other gaming laptops to see how it stacks up. Just quickly before we jump into the benchmark results, I'll cover off the specs in my unit. I've got an Intel i7-8750H CPU with Nvidia RTX 2060 graphics and 16GB of memory running in dual channel. The G7 is available in different configurations. You can check updated pricing for different models in the description. I'll also note that Dell has already refreshed the G7 lineup with Intel's latest 9th gen CPUs, so expect slightly different results there. I was running Windows 10 with the latest Nvidia drivers available, and just as a reminder, we're only looking at gaming performance here. If you're new to the channel, get subscribed for the upcoming full review which covers everything. We'll start off with the results from all 20 games at all setting levels, then compare with some other laptops afterwards to see how the G7 stacks up. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode and not in multiplayer mode, as it's easier to consistently reproduce the test run. The purple bars show the results with ray tracing disabled, while the green bars show RTX on. The RTX results weren't great at ultra and high settings, though it was mostly playable. For a game like this, I'd want higher FPS though, and RTX off at ultra settings looks better and runs similarly to RTX on at low settings. Battlefield 1 was also tested in campaign mode and was performing quite well, with ultra settings still able to reach above 100 FPS, while around medium settings would be a good match for the optional 144Hz display. Apex Legends was tested with either all settings at maximum or all settings at the lowest possible values, as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. It played alright even with everything maxed out, averaging about 80 FPS, and averaging about 47% higher with everything on minimum. Far Cry New Dawn was tested with the built-in benchmark. In this test, above 75 FPS averages were possible at Ultra, very similar to other 2060 laptops that I've covered. Far Cry 5 was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and the results were ahead of the newer Far Cry New Dawn just covered, and we'll see how this one compares to some other laptops later. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature, and while I have to regularly refresh the replay due to updates, I test in the same area. Even with max settings, over 100 FPS was easily possible in this seemingly well-optimized game. Overwatch is another well-optimized game and was tested in the practice range, as other players, bots, and even different maps in actual gameplay affect the frame rate, and this allows for consistent testing. Even maxed out at epic settings was giving us around 140 FPS, plenty to take advantage of the optional 144Hz screen. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark. The results were alright here, close to many other 2060 laptops I've tested so far, but again there will be some comparisons with other laptops later. Metro Exodus was also tested using the built-in benchmark. Most parts of the game perform a fair bit better than this, so don't take these results as a good indication of what to expect throughout the entire game. It's more of a worst case, but it does let you perform the same test to compare against. CSGO was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark, and like always, high frame rates were coming out of this test. Even with all settings at maximum, over 160 FPS was possible with much lower at lower settings if you need it. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark, and as a game, I found a benefit from Nvidia's new Turing architecture. Even with ultra settings, almost 120 FPS was possible in this test. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, and over 100 FPS was possible even with the settings maxed out at ultra, with closer to 130 at very low settings. Honestly, not too different from most other laptops that I've tested recently. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, still enough to play the game fine, and at most setting levels I found it was performing a little ahead of the G5 with the same specs that I've previously tested. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane with an average amount of action going on, and it was running very smoothly without any problems at all. Even ultra settings were capable of 140 FPS in this game, so another that would benefit from the optional 144Hz panel upgrade. Watch Dogs 2 was a resource intensive game, although I still found it to play perfectly fine even with ultra settings. With a stable 30 FPS to me it runs fine, and we're seeing that with the 1% low maxed out. Ghost Recon is another demanding game and was tested using the built-in benchmark. Unless you've got a top of the line laptop, 60 FPS at ultra in this test is basically not possible, but could be reached in this test with very high settings. The Witcher 3 was running well with Hairworks disabled, and played well with ultra settings in my test. Although you can get much higher frame rates if you prefer with lower settings, with almost 150 at low. But personally, I just use the higher settings and have it looking better, given I don't think it benefits much from huge FPS. 
Doom was tested using Vulkan, and this game runs very well on basically anything. Even with max settings, I was seeing very high frame rates, above 100 for the 1% low, so it was playing extremely smoothly. Strange Brigade was another game that was tested with Vulkan, and this one was also running well. Almost 100 FPS at ultra settings in the built-in benchmark, with low settings almost doubling this. Shadow of War was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and is another game that I've found to benefit from Nvidia's new Turing architecture. The results look alright, plenty for playing the game in any case, with almost 100 FPS reached in this test at high settings. Let's also take a look at how this config of the Dell G7 compares with other laptops to see how it stacks up. Use these results as a rough guide only, as they were tested at different times with different drivers. In Battlefield 5, I've got the G7 up the top in red, and the results were extremely similar to the G5 that I tested with the same specs. The Clevo NH58EDQ that I've recently tested was further ahead, due to excellent CPU performance I found in that machine. While the ASUS SCAR 2 also saw higher average FPS and a bit higher 1% low. Here are the results from Far Cry 5 with ultra settings and the built-in benchmark. The results are similar to other 2060 laptops I've tested, though it does seem to be just slightly below the others, and also behind the Dell G5 with same specs, but realistically still quite close. These are the results from Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the built-in benchmark at highest settings, and in this one the G7 scored the same as the G5, and again similar to most of the other 2060 laptops that I've tested. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a dedicated comparison between the G5 and G7 down in the comments. Overall, I thought the gaming performance from the new Dell G7 gaming laptop was alright. It seems to be pretty well in line with many other laptops I've tested with the i7 8750H CPU, RTX 2060 graphics, and dual channel memory. So how do you guys think the new Dell G7 gaming laptop did in these games? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and get subscribed so you don't miss the upcoming full review which will include everything else such as thermal testing.